printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today, 352-266-0333, or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X Imaging.com, or call 352-266-0333 for your free document management evaluation today. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Have you ever known anybody, or maybe you yourself, have avoided the big box stores because there's just too much walking that's necessary? I, I thought about this the other day because I saw uh, a couple. I saw the, the man drop off the woman at the front door of K, uh, at Walmart, and uh, and she went in, and I heard him say something to that effect. You go, that's, there's too much walking in there for me, and I just thought, oh, it must, must have some issues. Um he was overweight, he was obese, and I'm, I'm not picking on him, but, but I started thinking about something. If We had a report like a week or so, no, about a month or so ago, that when you go to Disney World, you typically walk 12 miles, mm-hmm. right? 12 miles. So th- this is an enjoyable place to go to, right? Or any place you go to. You go to a state park and take a hike, you know? A hike at a state park is typically two miles. Uh, you yeah. actually walk less at a state park than you will at, at Disney World, but just think about this. An enjoyable place to go with your family, 12 miles. If you can't handle the walking of, let's say, a Walmart, mm-hmm. you'll never enjoy it. And so, therefore, you won't do it. And it's, it's like it's, it'd be so easy. Here's the connection. If you become healthier, you'll enjoy your life better. You'll be yes. able to do more. Nobody has articulated this better than our next guest, and she does it way more than what I just tr- stumbled through. Her name is Jane Wilkins Michael. She has her own radio show. It's the Jane Wilkins Michael Radio Show. It airs on iHeartRadio, which is one of my favorite online things. She's a journalist. She's the founder of Better Than Before, which is a program designed to empower and improve your everyday life. Uh, she's a columnist for, for Health and Beauty. She's a contributor to the International Herald Tribune in Paris, France. That is awesome. Elle, Harper's <laughs> Bazaar, Cosmopolitan, the New York Times, and uh, her book is called Long Live You, Your Step-by-Step Plan to Look and Feel Better Than Before. And I didn't realize when I was talking about walking as just one of the things you could do better mm-hmm. if you were healthier and therefore enjoy the things that require walking. I didn't realize it was going to kind of parlay or make a pun sort of with the step-by-step part of this title. Uh, Long live you, Jane Wilkins Michael. Good morning, Jane. Oh, good morning. That is the best interview I've ever had. You know, I think that should be the whole show. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> so oh, no. Oh, we'll that, can't, right back. <laughs> that can't be enough. No, but, but, but it is true. I mean, I think, and you know why I think about it? Because it applies to me, too. Or it has. It is absolutely true. I can, I can remember thinking, gosh, that's just too much walking. I don't want to do that. You know? And then just small changes make big mm-hmm. differences over time. Yes. That's, that's very, and, and you know something? We're all trying to be, you know, the best parent, the best spouse, the best at our job. And in the midst of all that, we still have to manage to take care of ourselves and not totally lose our sanity. That's, you know, not, not easy. And it all becomes so overwhelming. It takes a toll on our health and energy. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard people tell me, I am sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. Yeah. What can I do? You hear that all the right? time, yeah. And I say it's never too early or too late to get your life back on track. So you can look and feel better than before. But, you know, it takes more than just eating leafy greens, right? If not, my husband would never be better than before. (laughs) Uh, You just have to add a few easy, practical, and doable steps, what I call lifestyle disciplines, into your daily routine. And walking is one of them. You said it very, very well. And did you know you walked well? Where are you calling from, by the way? New York City. New York, okay. So have you... In New York, you walk all the time. New York is a walker's city, isn't it? 
it is a walker city, but it's also, you know, it's a gym city. A lot of people go to the gym. A lot of people, you know, run marathons. I mean, it can make anyone feel like uh, like a lesser person if you if you hear all about, you know, you all know the superwoman who gets up at 5 a.m. She runs to the gym. She does everything, and by 8 o'clock she is, you know, back at her office and with her feet on her desk saying, you know, I'm a superwoman who says you can't do it all. Well, I tried that once, and I got a call from the nursery school that I had accidentally sent my daughter to school in her pajamas. Oh, so, oh no. You know, you have to do it slowly. <laughs> you can't do everything at once. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> yeah. It's overwhelming, and we don't want to be overwhelmed. You know, we have so much to think about every day that we want to do little, little things that will make our lives better than before. You know, there are no instant fixes. There are no magic bullets. It's all about moving in small increments from where you are to where you want to be. And uh, in, in, in your book, you make people feel like they can make the time because they're doing this balancing act with everything and they always have that same excuse. Oh, I don't have the time to do this. This is why I feel this way. But you encourage them and you say, yes, you can. It doesn't take much. You know, if you have 30 minutes going back to walking a day, there are tremendous benefits to walking, cardiovascular, metabolic, and even cognitive health. If you're depressed about something or you feel sort of low, I mean, like, who doesn't, right? Oh, I'm never depressed, says nobody ever. Um, you know, if you get out and walk and move, it's just a question of moving. You know, you don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to swim. I, I don't like to swim. I hate the elliptical. You cannot get me near the elliptical. But you, you should do something every day. It's all about consistency. Just to move, you know, to park your car a little further from your destination. To take, I mean, it sounds like something we've heard time and time again, but it right, works. You right. know, take, an elevator, uh, take the stairs instead of an elevator, unless you happen to live on the, you know, in New York City, on like the 25th floor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, have you, ever, have you ever seen the bottom of the City Corps building? I, I was looking at this report, how it's on stilts. Have you ever seen it? Yes, my husband's office was actually there. So yeah, oh, yeah. isn't that a crazy I, thing? Wow. Okay, well, never mind. That's a different subject. But anyway, so okay, so uh, when when we oh, I want to ask you about your husband because yeah. you, because a lot, and I'll tell you why in a second. Because when we look at our lives, we say, okay, I'm eating too many little debbies. I'm overweight. <laughs> <laughs> I need to change how I eat. I need to change how I live. It looks a little scary and. And like you're not going to enjoy life anymore because you say, "Oh my gosh, I got to eat the leafy greens." That's why I thought of your husband. Mm -hmm. I got to mm -hmm. eat that. I got I got to <laughs> exercise all the time. How am I going to do all these things? No more beer and pretzels for me. <laughs> yeah, but but isn't there a way to do it in moderation? Some of those things. Of course, and if you cut out everything you like, you're never going to ever lose weight. As a matter of fact, you know we all know every one of us has gone on these strict diets, and then by day three. We eat everything in the house, and then we not only gain back what we lost, but 10 pounds more. So oh, that's yeah. not the way to do it. The way to do it is to eat more, the right things, and to exercise more. That's what all the big spas are doing today. They're giving you more food. You know, years ago it was a lettuce leaf. Now they're giving you as much as you want, but they encourage you to exercise more. So it's all about, and, and what I say, too, some of the suggestions I give in the book, you know, go through your kitchen, go through your cabinets, go through your refrigerator, go on what I call a junk hunt. Get rid of the, the things that tempt you. You know, the, the Little Debbies, as you said, the Oreo sleeves, the cheese doodles, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Rocky Road ice cream. Mm. Um, and, you know, you remember, you can't eat what you can't see. So don't tempt yourself. But, again, do it slowly. Don't get rid of everything at once because you'll just end up, you know, restocking. Just little, little by little. And, and that's what counts. Uh, you focus on spirituality also in your book, which is very commendable of you. I do, and I feel that spirituality is not something you do, it's something you are. And everyone has a different belief about that, so I don't force my beliefs on anybody. It's just that I would like people to be in touch with their spiritual side, which I think we all have. And, and it's in, yeah. one, one spiritual slash physical thing is fasting. Do you, do you, um, do you think fasting is a good thing, and, and fasting regularly? Seriously? You don't, oh, you don't exactly. think it's a good idea? Well, so, really? Well, well, I don't I fast. I have to tell you, Larry, I, I fast I between one meal, one meal and another. Yeah. That's my fast. Oh, my goodness. No, fat, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> um, I went to a spa once, a fasting spa, 
And, you know, we were all starving. And I remember there was this sort of scandal du jour. The exercise instructor <laughs> was seen coming out of the tennis pro's room at like 3 a.m. And this very elderly woman was sitting in the lobby, and she, someone told her the story. And she looked, and her eyes opened, and she goes, really? And what do you suppose they were eating? Because <laughs> that's where the focus was. Nobody had that's any where food the focus to eat, was. so you're starving. Nobody, we were starving. <laughs> so, you know, I think you have to, of course you have to eat. I mean, if you want to fast for a day on juices, I mean, real fasting, fasting is, you know, mm -hmm. you have to go to an ashram. You can't be tempted. You have to go to a place that does it. It's very impossible to do it at home when you need the energy, when you need, you know, you're surrounded by food. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy. And I don't particularly recommend that. It's good for cleansing. I mean, if you want to have, instead of one meal, you want to have a green juice, that's fine. What but is cleansing? You know, I, I don't even get the whole cleansing thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you, what, what is the purpose of cleansing? I mean, does it really cleanse you? I mean, I mean as soon as you put food in there, you're dirty again. Is it really dirty? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it looks dirty, but is it well, that's, really? That's one, way, that's, one way of, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> it's, it's rather drastic, but yes. It's, it's not a question of being it's just a question of giving your system sort of a rest, your digestive system. So it sort of, you know, does its thing, and it kind of cleans out some of the toxins that you might have had in it from the little Debbies, et cetera. <laughs> Not to say anything bad about the little Debbies, but, you know. Poor little um, Debbie. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it does give your system a rest. But, again, I get too hungry. I have to eat, you know. I need to eat. I, I can't not eat. Okay. Uh, so we want to find out if there are things we should stay away from completely. Yeah. Um, Jane Wilkins, Michael, you're, you're fun. You're fun. No wonder you're popular as a radio host. Uh, Long Live You is her book, your step-by-step -step plan to look and feel better than before. We'll take a little break and be right back with Jane Wilkins, Michael, after we catch up on the weather and a couple of commercial announcements. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of clouds and sun today with a shower or thunderstorm in the area, mainly during the afternoon hours over the interior, the high 85 to 89. Partly cloudy tonight, though 68 to 72. Clouds and some sun tomorrow with a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon, high 87 to 91. And on Wednesday, intervals of clouds and sun with an afternoon thunderstorm likely high 89 to 93. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Friday, May 29th, kicks off the second annual Ocala Bike Fest. It starts at Harley-Davidson of Ocala, where you'll find vendors, beer, food. It starts at 11 a.m. with a live DJ till 3 and live music from 3 to 7. Then Saturday starts off at Ocala Indian with a poker run at 10.30 a.m. It all ends up at ARC's main campus on Mayor Camp Road, where you'll find bike games, 50-50 drawing, beer, and live music by the Blues Busters, Rusted Steel, and more. The best barbecue restaurants and food trucks in town are going to be there competing for the title of the Ocala Bike Bike Fest's best barbecue, and most importantly, the chance drawing for the hardest decision you'll ever have to make. A brand new Harley or a brand new Indian? That's right. This year's winner will choose between the Harley or the Indian. Indian or the Harley? The 112-year battle continues. Which bike will go home with the lucky winner? The public is welcome to all events. No motorcycles needed. Come out, have fun, and help a great cause all at the same time. Friday and Saturday, May 29th and 30th. For more information, visit OcalaBikeFest.com. Hi, this is JP from Pen Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Pen Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Pen Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. La Famiglia Pizzeria has moved into Ocala. Stop by today at 2504 Southeast 17th Street and see for yourself what everyone is talking about. Awesome place. I never get pizza anywhere else. Great New York style pizza and dishes. Best pizza in Ocala. One trip and you'll agree, La Famiglia Pizzeria is the best. La Famiglia Pizzeria. Stop by for a pizza that you'll love or call in and order yours for pickup. 352-245-2419. La Famiglia Pizzeria. All right, 19 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Jane Wilkins, Michael, is on the phone. You probably hear her, or she's on the on the phone, on yes. the air with us. <laughs> and uh, she's got her own radio show called the Jane Wilkins, Michael Radio Show. She writes for all the big papers. She even does uh, something for a, a, a French 
paper, right? The International yeah. Herald Tribune in Paris, France. Cool. So that means she must speak and write in French, right? Long Live You is the title of her book. Your step-by-step plan to look and feel better than before. Jane, I, I, I know what the difference is between your book and every other weight loss slash health book. You know what the difference well, is? I, oh, yes. Go ahead. They all tell you what to do. You tell us how to do it. I think it's a big difference. Yes. And, and you want to know something? No offense to the other books. But the truth is we all sort of know what to do. We all sort of know, okay, we shouldn't be eating the bad stuff. We should be eating the good stuff. But you kind of give us a little bit of a, of a, of a narrative that will say, you know, to get into our psyche. Yes. That helps us say, okay, so this is the approach. This is how I do it. It's, it's kind of like saying, here's how you get to, to Chicago. Yeah. You know, but you don't tell us to get in the car and drive, you know? So you're telling us how to do it. Well, it's true. And also, as I say, I think we're so overwhelmed, you know? We're just, everything comes at us from all sides, just constantly throughout the day. And and that tends to make us feel like we don't want to hear any more, you know? We're just, we can't process one more thing. And knowing what you, you you can't do, you know, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, well, it, you know, it makes it even um, it, it makes it even more stressful. We don't want stress. And I was just listening to the commercial, La Familia, La Familia Pizzeria, that just moved to Ocala. You can have that pizza. Just order some vegetable topping on it along with the yeah, pepperoni. Yeah. You know, do it slowly. Do you, you know, know do you, one of the things, you, I mean, you write about it real briefly, but it's, it, it's struck a chord with me as you talk about drinking more water. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's, it's something I started doing maybe a year or so ago I don't know when I started doing uh-huh. this but but it is I discovered something about water that um, was back actually based on something another author told us about he told us about al- alkalinity yes and alkalinity is good for you as long as it's not overdone mm-hmm. and so I, I took these litmus paper and I tested tea I tested coffee I tested soda I tested Gatorade I tested everything and I tested water and the only thing that was really alkaline was water mm-hmm. everything else was very acidic mm-hmm. So I said, well, I'm just going to start drinking water. I'll be more alkaline and be healthier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're much more advanced than most of us, Larry. I don't recall ever tasting my, uh, testing my water for alkalinity. Oh, I went crazy <laughs> looking for the, it's. It's not easy <laughs> to find Taking litmus paper. No. Step. <laughs> no, but if you, if you look I mean, for... I just tell people to drink more water. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know, but look, Jane, do... do you ha- you're in New York, so you should be able to find litmus paper pretty easy. But I had to go to a couple <laughs> pharmacies. And in fact... The kid at the first pharmacy I went to said, I don't even know what that is. I said, you're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to do a litmus paper test when you were in school? <laughs> but no, I, oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, no. I think we should drink. And I got this actually from the athletes I interviewed for my first book. And, you know, you should drink even though you're not thirsty. Most people say, well, I'm not thirsty. Why should I drink? It's good to keep hydrated for your skin. It's good for your health in general. So just make a point to drink more water. It's that easy. You know, try to have a glass every hour if you can. And liquid, it's, water is water. It's not coffee, not tea, not soda. It's right, water. Right. So, well, and you know, I used to disagree that. with that. See, my thinking was before, come on, all this stuff is 99% water. How is it not as good as water? But after I did that litmus test, I said, oh, mm-hmm. there really is a difference. Yeah. Thank goodness, thank goodness for all of us that you did that test. Again, you've, taken it, you've, taken it, you've taken it one step further. I never would have thought of that one. Uh, you talk about stress and anxiety. I mean, sometimes uh, people have imagined anxiousness or imagined uh, stress just just because, you know, they don't want to go to work. So by the time they get to work, they have themselves all worked up. And, you know, it, 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 it really takes a toll on them. But you also focus on that. And focus is a real key issue for you. Oh, very much so. Well, I've never been stressed, says nobody ever. Um, it's, you know, you, you do have to deal with stress every day. That's part of life. And I think what we forget to do during stressful times is to breathe. And that sounds so basic. I mean, we all breathe, but you know what I'm saying. Deep breaths. You know, we have to yeah. step back and take some slow, deep breaths to just focus, refocus, sort of regroup. And that is to take even four very deep inhales and exhales and on the exhale you think relax 
And that really does work. I mean, I'm, I'm one, I do get anxiety attacks. We all do. We all get nervous for something, you know. I'm sure that, you know, and I used to, before I went on the air, you get used to it, you know, for a while. But you do get nervous, and you sort of have to just breathe into it. And it really, really works. And also, uh, it helps to make you sleep a little better. I always found that, you know, you wake up at 5 in the morning, and that's when all the demons come to you. You know, everything is a lot oh. worse at 5 in. <laughs> Don't you find? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly. They, they come to me and I have to send them away. It's like, God, I'd love to play right now, but I got to sleep. C- can I ask you to speak to some of our listeners? Of course. Jane Wilkins Michael is our guest, and we do have some listeners, so let's take, we have some listeners. Let's take some of their calls. Good, good morning. You're on the air. With- uh, it's my it's my husband. <laughs> good morning. You're now on you the air. Now you don't have to eat kale today. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm a uh, recently retired, recently retired mailman, and I uh, I used to take a thermos of water out with me uh, at the beginning of the uh, mail day, and uh, about halfway through, I'd have to fill it back up again. Uh, Good so, for you. Uh, and I always keep a, a a jug of water in my refrigerator so I can have a nice cold water. Yeah. That's yep. terrific. Yeah, you have to kind of uh, hear. Yeah. Yep. Uh, have a good day, y'all. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think everybody's discovering the benefits yeah. of water. Yeah. But that's very incredible that he has the foresight to do that because you and I found that out riding bicycles. We didn't take water at first, and then we just about oh. died. <laughs> and then we made yeah. sure to stock up on it yeah. to have it wherever we go. Let me go back yeah, but Larry not only has the water, he has the litmus paper to go with it. Exactly. Oh, you're going <laughs> to... See, you're going to make fun wow. of that, but one of these days you're going to get it and you're going to use it on your show. You're going to say, look at this. Look what, I, look what I got here. Are you That's kidding? Right. As soon as I get off the phone, I'm going to go out to CVS and get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but be careful. The CVS guy might not know what you're talking about. Uh, no, good, I'm sure he won't. Good morning. You're on the air with Jane Wilkins Michael. Yes, good morning, everybody. See, my wife has uh, talked us all into drinking a lot of water because it's good for you and everything else, but I hate water, but I, I don't mind drinking seltzer water because it's got a little bit of a, so I say, a tick to it. What is your thought on that? I find personally that seltzer water, um, it, it gives me, it, it, it's not as calming to my, my stomach. I mean, it's better than drinking soda, of course. And in fact, what I recommend for people who do drink a lot of soda is not to cut it out completely at first, but to drink, you know, like put a half inch of soda into a glass and pour the rest seltzer on top of it. And if seltzer, uh, you know, you feel better, I'd like to drink it. It's, it's, it's okay to drink. Water, plain water is better. It's more alkaline, as Larry says. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's true. Thank you. It is true. It well, is more alkaline. See, see now, the one thing, I, w- I want to tell you about the sleeping thing, because I, I read this once before, that if you're having a hard time falling asleep, mm-hmm. b- b- bloat your stomach until, like you pop in your belt and, and, do, and try to do it 10 times. Oh. Like take a deep breath to the point where you're trying to, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just pull yeah. in enough air to try to pop your belt. Make your belly so Larry, big. where are you getting this information? <laughs> but I'm telling you, you can't I've do it. I've never heard of that. You will, no, you will, no. I knew everything about Jane, it. Jane, listen, you will never, <laughs> you will fall asleep. You will never get to the number 10. You will never be able yeah. to do it 10 times. You will fall asleep before you reach 10. If you're having trouble falling asleep. He practices. I haven't. What? I, I, I do something a little more practical. I, I think about what I call the horizontal rule. No negative self-talk when you are horizontal in bed. That means you're lying down. That's right. You have to, and what what I find helps is before you go to bed, keep a notebook next to your bed and write down everything that has bothered you during the day and also what you have to do tomorrow. So you don't wake up again at 5 a.m. and go, oh, my God, I forgot to, you know, do X. Or, I, you know, I didn't worry enough about the way that person looked at me, you know. Oh, <laughs> I guarantee you this is a – I guarantee your husband is not doing this. There's, there's, there's no way your husband is lying next to you. I mean, he's just, what are you doing, writing while he's sitting? Did, did, he, did, did he write you a note? Have you? <laughs> no, but we're, we were born into the same kind of body. He, yeah. <laughs> I talk about him. Oh, that is so funny. I talk about him on the show, right? And he says to me, would you please not say anything negative about me anymore? So I always put in before that, yes, he does eat kale. Yes, he, no, he doesn't eat kale. He considers himself a super taster. But this is live. He's not going to hear. Um, and we're in New York. So, um, 
He's, he's, please don't, don't send the tape. Um, he is a, what he's considered a super taster, which means that kale, you know, bitter greens taste very strong to him, so he won't, won't eat that. <clears throat> but I tried to give him spinach. You know, you work around that. Yeah. The deep, the deep breath thing. I believe in the deep breath thing, but I can't do it intentionally. I have to, like, run or do something that causes me to be out of breath, and then I'm breathing deeply and I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Then, then you do the deep breath thing. Yeah. Yeah. You have a very different way of looking at life. P- plus, we got. <laughs> he does. Plus, He's very successful. Plus, attitude. you know, you know, oh, Robin. How do you deal with this? Jane, episode? one more thing. We have here the, a lot of sun, and there's a nudist camp not too far from here. What's That's it called right, again? Exactly. Cypress something. Yeah, Cypress. And they have a new ad right now that says, "Get your vitamin D and visit us." That's right. I guess the more skin, <laughs> the more sun on the skin, right? Isn't that what they say? That's right. Get vitamin D. I don't know. The more skin showing, the more. Vitamin Just thought D. I would invite you if you wanted to come down. <laughs> not that I've ever no, no, been no, there. That's okay. I'm, I'm still, you know, I still have to get over not getting in a bathing suit. So no, that's okay. A nudist is, you know, <laughs> let's start start small here. Yeah. It's summer, you know. You got to think about stuff like that. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, you'll you'll be seeing a lot of people starting small if you go there. <laughs> It's a joke. So it's a joke. All right. Long live you. This is a very well-written book. Jane That's Wilkins, great. Michael, thank you so much. for This is an honor, and you are certainly a lot of fun. Call me if you want the copy of the book that she sent us. Uh, and, Jane, we got about 10 seconds. What's your website? JaneWilkinsMichael.com, and you can also buy the book on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble, and it also comes in an ebook for Kindle or Nook. Thank you, nice. Jane. Right, we'll be right back. News ready to go. I'm Pam Puso. Security remains tight around a restaurant in Waco, Texas, following Sunday's biker brawl that left nine people dead. Nearly 200 are behind bars. They have recovered so far more than 50 weapons, ranging from guns to knives, bats, chains. Authorities say five different biker gangs were involved. Fox's Casey Stiegel. Amtrak trains are running again between New York and Philadelphia with new safety measures in place. With the added attention, uh, I think this is going to be a very smooth ride. That man was on the first train out of New York bound for Philadelphia. He says the world is falling apart. Senate Republican Lindsey Graham of South Carolina may be ready to run for president. I'm running because of what you see on television. Senator Graham telling CBS he's been more right than wrong on foreign policy. Fox News, we report, you decide. And now another golf confessional brought to you by Golfsmith. A woman told her husband she had to take a few days to find herself. So she went to Golfsmith for their fitting days going on now for a custom fitting and to check out the latest gear from all the biggest brands, like the tailor-made R15 driver. She didn't find herself, but she found a fantastic driver and had it fit for herself. Close enough. Get fit during Golfsmith fitting days. It's free, it's fast, it's fundamental. Golfsmith, anything for golf. At Choice Hotels, we know business trips start with a choice. Stay or go. You can press send or press...